Hello and welcome to another video in the Chemical Kinetics and Equilibrium Discussion Series. For this video, we will be talking about chemical equilibrium. Uh, thus far in discussing reactions, we have assumed that the reactants are completely converted to products. A reaction of this sort is said to be or is said to go to completion and sometimes, however, a reaction is reversible. So when we say reversible reaction, it can occur in either direction. Consider the reversible reaction here of carbon monoxide and water to form carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So two full-headed arrows are used to show that the reaction can proceed from left to right and right to left as written. So the forward reaction proceeds from left to right and the reverse reaction proceeds from right to left as drawn. So when carbon monoxide and water are mixed together, they react to form carbon dioxide and hydrogen by the forward reaction. Once carbon dioxide and hydrogen are formed, they can react together to form carbon monoxide and water by the reverse reaction. So the system is at equilibrium when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. And the net concentrations of reactants and products do not change at equilibrium. We also have what we call the equilibrium constant. Because the net concentrations of the reactants and products do not change at equilibrium, they are used to define an expression which is the equilibrium constant. So what do you mean by equilibrium constant? The relationship between the concentration of the products and the concentration of the reactants is the equilibrium constant K. And brackets like this are used to symbolize, uh, to symbolize the concentration in moles per liter or molarity. So consider the following general reaction where A, capital A and capital B represents the reactants while capital C and capital B represent the products, while the small uh, letters A, B, C, and D represent the coefficient in the balanced chemical equation. So remember, for us to determine the equilibrium constant, we still have to have the balanced equation. And equilibrium constant is equal to K, wherein K is equal to the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. So as you can see here in the formula, we will multiply the concentration of the uh, products and then raise it to the power of the coefficient in the balanced equation, same as true with the other product here, D, and then divide it by the concentration of the reactants raised to, the, to their respective coefficient. So the expression for the equilibrium constant for any reaction can be written from a balanced equation as shown for the reaction here of nitrogen and oxygen gas to form nitrogen monoxide. So since K is a constant, it determines the ratio of products to reactants at equilibrium no matter how much of each substance is present at the beginning of the reaction. As you can see here, we can write the formula for equilibrium constant by having the brackets in a uh, by having the nitrogen monoxide in brackets and raise it to 2 since 2 is the coefficient in the balanced equation and then divide it by the concentration of nitrogen multiplied by the concentration of oxygen. So the coefficient becomes the exponent. Now for the magnitude of the equilibrium constant, it tells us whether the products or reactants are favored once equilibrium is reached. So when K is much greater than 1, when the numerator is larger, therefore the equilibrium lies to the right and favors the product. Whereas when K is much less than 1, or wherein the denominator is larger, the equilibrium lies to the left and favors the reactants. So when K is around 1, wherein both are, are similar in magnitude, both reactants and products are present in similar amounts. So for example, the equilibrium constant for the reaction of hydrogen and oxygen to form water is much greater than 1. So the product water is highly favored at the equilibrium. A reaction with such large K essentially goes to completion with little to no reactants left. So based on this uh, reaction, the product is favored because K is greater than 1, therefore the equilibrium 
lies to the right. So here is a table summarizing the magnitude of the equilibrium constant. So when it is greater than 1, it, uh, it favors the product, where, whereas it, if it is less than 1, it favors the reactant. Uh, if it is all, uh, almost the same or K is almost equal to 1, both the reactants and products are present in equilibrium. So let's work on some examples in calculating the equilibrium constant. So we have here calculate the uh, K for the reaction between the general reactants A sub 2 and B sub 2. The equilibrium concentration are as follows. For A, we have 0 0.25 molar. For B, we have 0 0.25 molar. And for AB, we have 0 0.50 molar. So as you can see here, we have here the balanced equation A and B, A and B will yield uh, 2 moles of AB. So again, we have to write first uh, the expression for the equilibrium constant from the balanced equation. So that, that, that would be K is equal to the concentration of AB raised to 2, which is the coefficient in the balanced equation, over the concentration of A multiplied to the concentration of B. And then substitute the given concentration in the equilibrium expression and calculate K. So based on what's given earlier in the problem, we have the concentration of AB, 0 0.50, and then the concentration of A and B, which are 0 0.25. And then if we, some, uh, if we will perform the operation, we have 0 0.25 over 0 0.0625, we have 4. We have the answer 4, and the unit of the answer is always moles per liter or molar, molar, which is usually omitted. And that's the end of our discussion for equilibrium. Thank you for listening.